Welcome to your weekly program, Bilahdan, a show with an accent for those without one. We all heard about, you know, the FBI, the kind of a law enforcement way of trying to detect extremism uh, in the Muslim community. CVE is uh, counter violent extremism. Uh, it's uh, live and well, and they use a scale to measure or an index to measure uh, how radicalized. Muslims in the school, mosque, what have you. Here we have, uh, you know, there was last week, it was a great event that really deal with uh, the Somali community differently and rather emphasize uh, the culture and poetry. It was uh, uh, a poetry event at the loft uh, called Saved by Face and Verse. It's a beautiful, uh, about eight, ten uh, poets from Somalia that really uh, in, uh, very entertaining, very magnificent, insightful, really reflects the complicity of the Somali culture and Somali community. And I, I think majority of them are women, and uh, I think, and I, in my humble opinion, what makes Somalia is women and poetry. We have a very special guest today. We have Sa Asma Farah. She is a Somali poet, and she took part of that uh, night, welcome to uh, Thank you so much for welcoming me. I'm glad to be here today. <laughs> Thanks so much. That was a magnificent event. They talk about three, four hundred people there attended uh, Somali. None of them were Arab there. I was the only Arab there. <laughs> Represent. I haven't seen an Arab there. I don't know why. But when I go to an Arab event, I see Somali, and I'm just saying that I admit it as an Arab. Uh, and I, I think it's very nice, and I think the Arab community need to get involved with what Somali are doing, vice versa, of course. Tell us a little bit about uh, your relationship with, uh, with poetry. Um, well, I started really writing poetry when I was in high school. I went to Blake Upper School in Minneapolis, and um, I took a class called African American Literature. Um, and my teacher, her name was Miss Easton, and she actually encouraged all of us every week to write, you know, a piece of poetry inspired by, you know, something that we read in the book. So I became very inspired by the poet um, Langston Hughes. Um, I, was, I was very inspired just by the, the struggle of the African-American people here. And the more I got into poetry, the more I actually reconnected with my roots um, you know, in Somalia through poetry, because as many people know or don't know, we're known as the nation of poets. So <laughs> yeah. it kind of, I came through it in a, in a kind of, I don't want to say backwards way, but in a, in, through another culture, and I rediscovered my own culture. It's interesting when you say a, a teacher encourages me. And, and, I mean, uh, and I don't want to stereotype. I mean, back home, uh, I mean, uh, it's unheard of. I mean, uh, I know it's heard of, but uh, the fact that you nourish talent in the school and other people, this is really something uh, we lack, and we, you know, we we have a lot of talent, but it's put down of some sort. If your poetry is not cheering for CC, you you might, you might not get anyway. But uh, you know, you're talking about uh, you know how you use poetry to uh, explore Somalia for you as somebody. Uh, you, you you were born in Gambia, and uh, and. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, you, you're talking about uh, Somalia for you is, is just a place, a culture, a way, you, you know, have you ever been in Somalia? I've never been to Somalia, actually. Um, the only time I've been back to Africa since I came here, I came here when I was about uh, maybe eight months old. I went back to Gambia in 2008, um, and Gambia is a very peaceful country. It's not a conflict zone at all. Um, and I do know there are parts of Somalia in which there aren't um, conflict, but uh, however, it's still kind of a hotbed uh, <coughs> region in the world. So no, I've never been back there. So you know, you know, just events like this in the Somali community, like uh, say, uh, by faith and verse and other things like that have been ways for me to kind of reconnect with what it means to be a uh, traditional Somali, to be honest, because uh, I could never do Somali poetry that's called Gabi, for example, or Burambur. These are traditional forms of Somali poetry that you also saw performed in that night because, quite honestly, I don't even speak the level of Somali required in order to, you know, perform that uh, to the full extent, to its full extent. So what I choose to focus on, you know, my poetry is what I know, which is growing up in South Minneapolis, growing up as a member of the Somali diaspora. I think that my poetry is, you know, it's inspired by that. It's inspired by what I see from my brothers and sisters who live here, our aspirations, you know, where we failed, what we've overcome. Um, but at the same time, looking, looking back towards the nostalgia of Somali history. Um, so kind of that's where it comes from. And, and that's, you know, it's not uh, something unusual. You know, a lot of artists, a lot of people, usually they are diaspora. Usually they are out somewhere. 
and uh, they look at their country, the homeland, from afar. And that's sometimes uh, liberating. You know, you can become and look everything, not when you are immersed in it. So would your poetry be different if you were living in Somalia? Um, it probably would be different because a lot of things I talk about, I'm speaking from the perspective yeah. of being really a Somali-American. And for the longest, I had an issue with that title in and of itself, <laughs> but I've come to realize that's really who I am. If I was in Somalia, I'd probably be talking about the corruption, and I'd probably get killed. Um, but, you know, so I kind of had the freedom to talk about different things um, being here. And to go back to a point you made earlier about how it was through education that I got to this point, um, as many first-generation kids, I come from a very serious family, um, a family of people who, I'm not saying they don't respect the arts, but they, my father encouraged me from a very early age to become a doctor, for example. Yeah. And this is not very, yeah, it's not very unusual. So it's not that my family didn't encourage me to write poetry, but they didn't want to come here to send me to school to get a liberal arts degree, you know? No, no. So it's, it was yeah. Engineering, poetry, and Absolutely. doctor. Yeah. And, and, and Absolutely. And I think a lot of Arab arts and a lot of uh, arts from this part of the world they go through the same experience. And uh, arts for them is capturing what all this opportunity you have missed. Uh, you know, I mean, you didn't give the chance to be nourished as a grown up. But in your poetry, uh, you're still talking about Somalia uh, that, it, it, that is in the mainstream media. You're, you're acting to that. And, uh, and uh, as a Somali American, you see it both ways. And for you, it must be troubling to see your Somalia has been portrayed in the uh, mainstream media the way they do, you know, piety and uh, you know, terrorism and Shabab and, uh, and all of that. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, that uh, poem that you read that you said that day, mm -hmm. I'm not a pirate. Yeah, the poem that I performed that day was called Pirates. Um, and it was actually a little bit of the flow was based off of um, Nas, Nasir Jones, he is a rapper, and he had a poem called N-I-G-G-E-R. And essentially it was about how African Americans in the United States were disconnected from their roots in West Africa and, you know, connecting back to the history that they had. And I took that same concept, not that Somalis are disconnected from our history. We know who we are, you know. Unfortunately, the world, a lot of people in the world and in the media, especially in the United States, they don't know who we are. So that's kind of, that was kind of the play um, that I was trying to um, create within that poem. And what you see in the media when you see Somalia, you see famines, you see just things just look dastardly. Yeah, exactly. So my, my, huge, my biggest problem with it is not to say that that Somalia doesn't exist because I have a lot of people, even in my family, who will tell you that everything is going great. It's like there's no civil war. Why the hell did we come here in the first place? Exactly. You know, clearly there are things going wrong yeah. in the country. Yeah. Uh, there's actually a lot of things going right, and there's also a history that was pre pre-colonial Somalia, yeah. pre the yeah. mess that you see right now. And that's kind of what I wanted to highlight. And the reason I think that message is so important for many uh, people of color and people from the international community is because we suffered the worst of colonialism, the worst of imperialism. And then people want to ask us, why is your country so horrible? Why is it this way? Like, you guys are horrible people. And it's like, there's a whole back history that is not taught, you know. When a, when a corporation comes to Somalia and dumps their toxic waste that's coming from your hospitals, that's coming from sick people in this country, and they dump it, and then they call us pirates, and then they say, what's wrong with you guys? You guys are inhumane. <laughs> what's wrong with you? You know what I'm saying? There's a whole, the whole plethora world. of things going on in the world. Everything is interconnected, and that's kind of what the poem was about. So it, it, it seems like the, the, what are you saying? The, the average American is shield from what the horrible thing the government are doing out there. That's why they react like, what's wrong with you? But, but they have no idea the history of what's wrong with a uh, troubled area like Middle East or mm -hmm. so on. So, uh, uh, could, you, could we ask you to recite some of this poem? Absolutely. Um, I could definitely recite some of the poem. It goes like this. Pirates, people in rough areas thieving to extinguish suffering. I'm not a pirate. I'm a pilot, privileged individual lacking only in time, and that's the only thing standing in my way. And if I didn't have to write this term paper, I'd be marching the streets today, but you know what they say. We're pirates, P-I-R-A-T-E-S. We are much more, yet we choose to ignore the obvious, even when history acknowledges we were kings long before the colonists. 
I'm from Cedar, where we trust no Somali leaders. They use the local news station to feed us. Welfare queen and government cheese us. Where girls got Diana to die they face. Get them looking like a whole nother race. Got a lot of dropout, King Tut's in the cut, and a few glorious hood poet laureates and a lot of families working hard just to make ends meet. Even more college students struggling, racking up debt just to follow their dreams. But once upon a time, we were all newcomers, and we wanted everything, from a cement Section 8 Sultanate to the suburban McMansions. So much movement, we had the whole world asking, who are these people, and just where did they come from? We're from Somalia, nation of poets and business people, too. Since way back in the days, me and my people had made use of trade with ancient Egypt, and that's why, if you remember the time on MTV, Michael Jackson had Imam portray Queen Nefertiti. Little do they know that's not far from the truth because we had a whole empire under our Somali woman's rule and her name was Arawelo. Just a little short portion of it. Wow. This is the money. Uh, there's a lot of, I'm not saying anger in, in that poem, but a lot of questions you raised. That, uh, tell us about the role of a, <clears throat> a, uh, a poet. Is, uh, the role of artists, it, uh, you know, be active to try to change the reality or to just reflect it or to change it in, in art itself? I think that the role, for me personally, I take poetry as, you know, there's kind of two kinds of poetry in my book. Um, there's poetry that kind of focuses on <coughs> reflecting on the beauty of society or the beauty of culture and nature, just carrying on tradition of things that have been done. Um, and it's something you enjoy with your family to keep history alive and there's nothing really uh, not to like about it. And then there's poetry or art that pushes boundaries or causes question or comes from a revolutionary aspect because of either anger, intense anger, intense passion, intense love for a certain subject. And I think, I think that's where my poetry comes in. And the reason why I write poetry, like I said, is because I see issues in the world, I have a problem with it, I'm passionate about it, and I feel like it's not it's either ignored or people don't think that it's a big enough issue, you know? So unfortunately, I feel like these are the same issues that you know we often see reflected in the news when they say some kid went to go join this and this organization. It's a frustration because of the way they see the world. It doesn't have to do with not having enough after school activities. It has to do with speaking and speaking until you run out of voice and you want to go to someone else to give you a voice. <laughs> so beautiful. I'm not going beautiful. to anyone else. I'm giving you the voice right now. That's beautiful. It, it, tell us a little bit about, you know, uh, Somali culture as a nomad culture. I mean, uh, through history, uh, they have no problem carrying their own culture and go elsewhere. And I think some of, some of that, to preserve that culture, art and poetry was part of it. Absolutely. So you take it with you. Nobody can take it away from you. Absolutely. It's a way to preserve your history. The important things of your history is how we tell stories. Um, a friend of mine, her father, his name is Burbusha, he's a famous poet in Somalia. And basically what he'd do, he'd just go into the town squares and just yell about people he didn't like and just talk about how this guy's an idiot and they chased him around from town to exactly. town. Exactly. And that's Some kind oral of, culture. yeah, absolutely. So that's how we keep our traditions alive and um, just tell people what's going on in this city and that city, you know. And you are doing it here, Asma. Thank you Thank so much. Thank you so for much for coming. having this me. I really beautiful. appreciate it. Asma Farah, you know, a Somali poet, but participated in this wonderful event last week was uh, organized by Nemo Farah. I mean, you know Nemo Farah, and Nemo is really a power or, a, 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 you know, a, a force to reckon with in the Somali community. It was a wonderful event. A lot of people attended. It was a beautiful. We'll take a short break. That word really mean, it means how, excuse me, it means how colonialists <laughs> came to Somalia causing internal tribal divisions that left, leaving the black man to forever fight amongst himself. And that's partly the reason why Somalia is this way. That's the reason why I don't claim my clan. I refuse to rep my tribe. I rep every single mother, brother, father, and sister that's struggling to stay alive. I speak from the perspective of a deprived African child because they stole my history and tried to hijack my pride with prejudicial stories of piracy. But where are the headlines calling Halliburton a pack of murderous thieves? Or a big, 